everybody welcome hey last week was my 30th anniversary uh you know i told my wife when i asked her to marry me 31 years ago that she would never ever have to worry about her relationship or what i'd be doing out on the road uh now after all this time she's regretting the hell out of that let me tell you uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's always saying are you sure you can't meet someone are you sure <laughs> let's start <the> <laughs> Since 2020, we've done plenty of virtual comedy shows online. And though the virus is slowing, we'll keep going because we've still got lots of hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin. Welcome to Virtual Comedy Show. It's a Zoom meeting with jokes. So please turn on your camera, turn on your mic, unless you have barking dogs or a rabid moose in your living room, in which case, please mute yourself for Pete's sake. And let's have some fun. The Virtual Comedy Show, starring Steve Goody and Brad Tassel. Tonight, Steve and Brad welcome comedian Bill Van T. Plus funny songs from Janet and Charles Cox. And a patty melt from Patty Vasquez. And much, much more. Now, please welcome Brad Tassel. Hey, everybody. I didn't leave. I stayed right here. I'm I'm doing the sit down thing this week. Uh, welcome, friends, to the virtual comedy show, episode 186. I right. hear that yep. means that means we've had 185 chances to get this right, and uh, we're hoping tonight's the first night. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always next week, uh, but we do have an amazing show planned, guided by our, by our best pal Steve Goody, and we've got a juicy melt from Patty. And I just realized that juicy melt's a little creepier than I planned. <laughs> Patty, maybe not a juicy melt. That'd be a little creepy. So we also have one of our favorite talented guests, comedian, magician, Phil Van T. Uh, El Ropo, are we doing Are we doing that? Yeah, we are. He's. I think he's having dinner, but he'll be with us. He's having dinner. Yes, he's eating. Nothing better than getting a big full meal in before he performs. Actually, I think he's running DoorDash to someone else, but he'll be back. <laughs> well, he's a professional, and that's good. So, and of course, super musical couple. And now you can see them, Janet and Charles Cox. I think their faces will appear. Uh, also, I hope everyone had an amazing Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. You all have traditions around the Thanksgiving table. Our trans just uh, our tra tradition <laughs> is that everyone says <laughs> around the table what they're thankful for, and every year I preemptively say. I'm thankful none of you idiots say anything political. That's uh, <laughs> okay. and then we that win. Could be. That could be, and and it and it actually worked this year. <laughs> also, I would like to thank I'd like to thank Brick Manley for filling in last week uh, while I was on my 42nd honeymoon in 30 years. Uh, wow! I apologize to all the hardworking people out there, but my wife and I have been everywhere. And sadly, we're at the point that unless you can use the word pilgrimage, we don't even look at it. It's got to be a big <laughs> uh, Most people are like, oh, our, our second honeymoon in 40 years, we go on four honeymoons a year. Another one. <laughs> but this trip to New York was special. We were in New York City, as you all might know. First of all, uh, if you haven't heard, I got to be featured on Live with Kelly and Mark. Yeah. 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 So, and there's the bell. That, uh, that happened. <laughs> So, uh, so you can see that on December 28th. Uh, now, I love them, by the way, and I wanted to go see the show. And they say that the camera adds 10 pounds uh, when you go on TV, which I hope isn't true because Kelly in person only weighs 10 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> she will end up weighing zero. And she, is, she was super sweet and, uh, and was supportive and said nice things to me. Uh, we also saw... Uh, a lovely stand-up show featuring two comedians that have been on this show, the amazing Corey Kahaney, yeah. really, uh, oh. hilarious Carol Montgomery. Mm -hmm. The show was called hey. Women of a Certain Age. <laughs> and you know that my wife loved it because after every joke, she pointed at me and said, burn. <laughs> <laughs> so she liked her more than the act she saw in Edinburgh, I take it. That's right. That's right. And much, much, like <laughs> much better. But hey, you can't get burned on this show because the jokes are super cool. So let's get started. Here we go. Dun, da, da. We should have a little song right there. There you go. 
Here we go. Number one, Kyle Rittenhouse's lawyers announced that the gunman is broke. Oh. Yeah. And Aww. even worse, even worse, he is now in debt six hundred more dollars from his lawyers from making this announcement. I've <laughs> 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 done a million things with that, and I just went easy. On that. that was good. <laughs> wow, that's good. Because I'm not a fan of his. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Daryl Hall is suing John Oates mm -hmm. and has gotten a restraining order against his bandmate of 40 years. Oh my God. It's surprising, uh, John, because Daryl did it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and the truly, the singer truly said, say it isn't so. <laughs> he found out Oates must be really out of touch not to have seen this coming and thinks maybe there's a rich girl pulling the strings. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Now is Daryl Hall doing this to make Sarah smile? <laughs> or did he just decide I can't go for that? <laughs> and finally, <laughs> really? He said the partnership didn't make his dreams come true. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was super painful. Super, and thank God Bridget wasn't here to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll wait a second and she can hear this one. Hey, did everyone get their shopping done online today? It's of course not. Yes, we did. Yeah. Followed by, no way, this is going to fit Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and how are we going to get grandma's refund on $7 worth of plastic fruit from Amazon Wednesday? <laughs> I was trying to buy your grandpa boxer shorts. It said fruit. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma. Okay. Um. Bed Bath and Beyond is no more, as we know. But what is Aww. filling? There are more than 360 empty stores, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that is taking up a large number. Pickleball courts. <laughs> oh, rickety, retired, and rheumatism. <laughs> nice. All right. Hey, here we go. <clears throat> Israeli President Isaac Herzog met Elon Musk today after the billionaire has been endorsing anti Semitic conspiracy theories uh, on used to be Twitter, known as X <laughs> these days. The meeting will be closed door in hopes Musk won't get three women pregnant while they talk. Yeah. <laughs> There's a tendency to get people pregnant. <laughs> By the way, X has lost a large percentage of its advertisers after they noticed their ads were placed alongside incredibly offensive anti-Semitic posts. In response, Elon said, I can't help it. I post a lot. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> I'm getting oh, close. Oh wow! Thanks. Oh wow! True, true. <laughs> oh, we're all, you're all on the Elon train, are you? <laughs> we're all Muscovites now. <laughs> it's time now for the Marshall Stern minute, everybody. Oh boy! Oh yeah. no! Steve, we need an intro for this. Do I really have to? Nope. This okay. is where I read jokes <laughs> by improv artist and Buddhist Marshall Stern. Hey, I got and an intro thing for him. I got it. You ready? Here's his intro. <laughs> so that's that's the outro for every one of the jokes. That's true. <laughs> so hold on, be hold ready. On. I got another one. I got another one. Okay. <clears throat> this will be so worth it. There we go. <laughs> and I would like you all to remember that Marshall wrote these jokes. I did not change them in any way. A woman hiker was followed by three bears on the Sierra Madre Trail. She okay. described the harrowing experience as us, Ursa's, them. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Ursa's a bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we know. I think we knew that. It's in the sky. Major this is the minor. Marshall Stern yeah. Minute we're going through right now. <laughs> <laughs> My whole goal is to make sure you appreciate me. <laughs> well, you are working it well. Marshall Stern, right, yes. week and a half. Residents of Old Bridge, New Jersey, discovered a quarter ton of cooked spaghetti covering a 25 foot area near the riverbank. At Here. first, police thought they had caught the perpetrator, but it turned out to be an impasta. 
Oi, que bom. Oi, que bom. Yeah, back. That was the first third minute, everybody. Are you really at two? No, don't, don't, no, no. Don't no, no. encourage him. <laughs> many more than two. Those are the two I did. <laughs> okay. Hey, a priest has been stripped of his administrative duties after he let a pop star in her early 20s shoot a provocative video in the church. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. See, nobody saw this? No. Monsignor yes. Gigantiello, I think you say, Gigantiello, was demoted <laughs> after the New York bishop saw the video. For his part, the disgraced Monsignor said he didn't know the content of the video, what it was. He was just trying to impress the singer's teenage brother. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've been studying this at the has Marshall been the Marshall. No, it hasn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right. Wait a minute. Now, here's another joke from Marshall, but this one we wrote together. So here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't make it any better. I just <laughs> wanted to let you know. <laughs> Edgar Yudgovich broke a Guinness World Record by walking 34 feet and four inches across a slack line while juggling three knives. Very dangerous. When asked why he did this, he said, I don't know, it was my wife's idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I cut the blazing inferno part, though. <laughs> that was my punchline. I like it. I like it. Yeah, he wrote the first part. Here we go. A rat plague is hitting the Australian shore. Did you all see that? A rat yeah. plague. Thousands of rats are washing up on shore in one coastal town alone. Mm. We are really mm. scared. We are really scared. Australia means you never know what will jump out and attack you, said the rats. <laughs> <laughs> Clever rats. Because there's more dangerous stuff in Australia than rats. Yeah. Uh -huh. The rat juggling Snakes three knives. Like, okay. Yes, the rat, the juggling. <laughs> no, it's the juggling pythons. That's not anyway. A knife. Hey, that's a good band name, the juggling pythons. <laughs> All right, we got a couple more, and then we're done. That was my in other news. Band name. In other news, who heard this today? Uh, does anyone know what the Merriam-Webster word of the year for 2023 is? Oh God! Oh, I, oh, oh God! Oh. So, <laughs> who's saying ooh ooh? And tell us. Hi, Patty. Hi. Go. What is it, Just Patty? Authentic. It is authentic, everybody. Mm -hmm. oh. yes, it, was well, chosen. it was chosen because lookups of the word substantially increased this year. The definition, of course, is uh, usually confuses people. It can mean not false or imitation or true to one's own personality, spirit, or character. Uh, that's me in a nutshell, said chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, I, I, I would have <laughs> <laughs> of course. And last but certainly least. <laughs> and if it doesn't go well, I'm gonna blame Marshall Stern. <laughs> Psychology Today reports that during COVID, there was a dramatic decrease in contact between humans and wildlife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right, said an Alabama farmer. Don't you believe a word them animals say about me? All right, Steve Goody, everybody, coming in. Grand tassel, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. All right, moving once again that Brad works best under pressure when he writes these jokes at the last minute. I well, started, well, if we hadn't spent six hours with Haywood Banks today, could have got started. Oh, I was there, but it was that'll joyous. The, it was joyous. That'll knock the funny right out of you. All right, I'm they love it. We enjoy that a lot. All right, you can go away if you want. Before oh, you Brad wrote the jokes yesterday. I don't know if everybody noticed, my dad, who's usually logged in under the name Grandpa, is now logged in under the name Eileen, because there he is with his, so dare I say, girlfriend, Eileen. Wow. Yay. Oh. Yay. That was I'm the 72nd so time they logged in. So that was Hi, Eileen. Yeah. All right. And so, friends. As we all know, this is the point of the show where we do the top 10. So here comes this. And another thing that we all know, or most of us know, is that I work at the Bluebird Cafe here in Nashville, Tennessee. Every Sunday, I am the MC. I get to introduce people and make make fun of them. 
<laughs> That's what I do. Oh, right. And I've been doing that for well over 16 years, and I have heard just about every song there is to hear. I've certainly heard every song topic there is to hear over and over. So tonight's top 10 category is top 10 <laughs> uh, song topics that have never been tackled at the Bluebird Cafe. There's not that many. We've heard just about everything. Ray knows this. Yes, so do Charles and Janet. But there are a few that have never been tackled. So that is tonight's top 10 category. Top 10 song topics that have never been tackled at the Bluebird Cafe. Number 10. An ode to bacteria we have lost. <laughs> Got that covered. Number nine. Why cottage cheese is called cottage cheese. <laughs> that surprises me. Number eight. Song there. <laughs> How much America hates Matt Reif, who we never heard of two weeks ago. <laughs> no the relation. Top song topics that have never been tackled at the Bluebird Cafe. Number seven. How much America loves Hamas, who we never heard of two weeks ago. <laughs> Number six, Wednesday bingo night at the Westboro Baptist Church. I would like to hear that song. <laughs> so I, think that one's my with church. I would too. Number five, Ben Shapiro's 3 a.m. Chrome browsing history. <laughs> I don't mean to suggest that anybody do that. Number four, how often you should change the oil in a 92 Ford Escort. <laughs> never, never heard that song. Number number three, how much you should pay a 92-year-old Escort. Ah. <laughs> I don't want to hear that one. Yeah, I don't know. Number two. The history of cabbage, both in the culinary arts and as a projectile at a Matt Reif show. <laughs> <laughs> and the number one song topic that has never been covered at the Bluebird Cafe, Taylor Swift's secret satanic affiliation and matching sportswear collection. <laughs> <laughs> And ordinarily, that's where we would stop, but it turns out this particular topic is just ripe with possibility. So as we sometimes do, we're going to extend the top 10. We're going to extend it with what we call the bottom 10 song topics that have never been tackled at the Blue Bird Cafe. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here. Here we go. That it wasn't, wasn't easy the bottom to choose because I thought of about 150 of these. So here we go. Raise yourself. You can narrow it down. These are not good. Number 10, the love letters of Bill Cosby in sonnet form. Number nine, the <laughs> options. Number eight, oatmeal as a surgical anesthetic. Great. That's for me. Oops, did I do it wrong? Rats. Okay, who cares? Number seven, President Willard Fillmore's obsession with radio-controlled helicopters and farm implements. <laughs> Number six, being asked on every stupid website whether you're okay with cookies. <laughs> Come on. Bottom 10 song topics that have never been tackled at the Bluebird Cafe. Number five, whether a wallet made of foreskins will really turn into a suitcase when you rub it. No. Oh. 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 <laughs> number four, the life and times of Ron Jeremy. Speaking of which, number three, the tragic alcoholic adolescence of Zuzu Bailey from It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> I would really like to hear that song. Number two, the astounding similarities between Epsom salts and Epsom printers. Neither one works. <laughs> and the number one, number 10, bottom of the top 10 song topics that have never been tackled at the Bluebird Cafe, how Bill Maher still has a show. <laughs> That's a good topic, actually. You know, some of those would be good songs. I know. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, I would like Charles to do 10 of them and Janet do the other 10 before we <laughs> see you. Well. Went hard on Matt Rice, though. I've I do. Who do I? Who do I? I don't even know when you said right. You don't know what we're talking about, so you don't get to say stuff. I, I haven't seen his show. I haven't seen what he does? Anybody seen Matt Wright? Yeah. Oh, oh, you saw the show. It's what just was a the offensive joke fine. that he did? It's 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 not cancelable, but it's just stupid. Oh. So, anyway. Yeah. Who cares? I don't want to talk about canceled. You know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about whatever Patty wants to talk about. Where's Patty? Do we have Patty here? Wait a minute. Got her. Maybe she must have there she is. Hi, Patty. It's Patty, everybody. Hi, Patty. Hey, Patty. Hey, Patty. Somewhere. Wow. This is very Hello. festive. Big Christmas tree. That's so festive. Nice. All right. Well, let's do the little intro, and then we'll hear a little Patty melting. It's time for a Patty melt. With Patty Vasquez, Patty Vasquez. From global conflicts to greenhouse gases, the folks refusing to wear masks. 
says the politicians getting caught grabbing ass says she's melting down it's a patty vasquez patty melt in front of the tree <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the tree at uh, union station a few weeks ago uh brad mentioned that i used to have a setup in my basement and looked a little more professional than standing in my kitchen uh, unloading the dishwasher while i was doing this show so uh, or, <laughs> Or in the corner of my bedroom, trying to not let you see the messiest part. So I'm back in front of my green screen. My other choices are so this is uh, Union Station, which I uh, I love Union Station. I think this is, if you ever seen if you've ever seen the Untouchables, and there's a baby carriage going down the stairs, mm -hmm. and Andy Garcia stops the carriage. And anyway, if you don't if you're not there already, then never mind. But that's mm -hmm. uh, that's the Great Hall, and I think they did a, a beautiful job. Uh, it was that, or show you that this is actually also a green screen. Uh, I was trying to find some pictures uh, quickly. This is actually a green screen of the basement that I'm in, but a picture of a more clean area. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. Here, watch. See, what? See? Oh, wait. Hold on. How do I? The nun, right? So there you go. So <laughs> actually, that's not too dirty. It's just it's just the cabinets, and most of them are closed. Anyway, this is better. I uh. I I'm I'm a little bit uh, I'm, I'm a little scattered as usual. Uh, it was a good holiday. Uh, but in the middle of it, like Thanksgiving was fine. Uh, although huh, I asked my mom, I begged her, please, 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 please do not bring up the Middle East. Uh, I just know that you and Griffin are going to have different opinions. Uh, I've been listening to also I, I stalk my son on Twitter. So, yay. <laughs> and, <woo! laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, just, I can just uh, <laughs> extrapolate from both of their personalities where they stand on things. Griffin is a young, far left progressive which as we know is now, <laughs> what is happening? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I said, please, please, whatever you do, please don't talk about the Middle East. Okay, I'll keep it to myself. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my mom's from Mexico <laughs> and I apologize because it sounds like now I'm doing an Al Pacino version of her. Uh, yes. <laughs> and and not even the good, ver like not even Scarface, like say hello to my little friends, more like, um, actually, it's, I, I think it's, it's it's more like uh, Anaconda and, uh, and <laughs> who was an Anaconda? John, somebody, John uh, Angelina Jolie is dead. Yeah, John, John Voight. Voight. Yes, remember he had a horrible Spanish accent. Boy. Anyway, <laughs> I think I'm making her sound more like that. So anyway, she said, okay, I, I won't, I won't, I won't share my thoughts on the Middle East. And she goes upstairs, turns on the TV and puts the news on. Okay. <laughs> so technically, I think in her mind, she didn't bring it up. They were just discussing what was in front of them, <laughs> which was fun. <laughs> now, I just pretended like I was cooking. Oh, the gravy's almost done, which it was store-bought. It was done when I brought it home. Yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, so that was Thanksgiving, and it was fine. We had a lovely meal. It was very cozy, very small. And because we're online, I can't really tell you why we stayed home, except to tell you that uh, things like 23andMe has ruined uh, – <laughs> My in law side of them. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. I just want to say, for the record, for years since Steve and I met each other in uh, in two thousand. Well, we met each other in nineteen ninety. Uh, they're mid early nineties. Nineteen ninety two. We met each other. He met my family. They're all very colorful, uh, very eccentric. Uh, some of them somewhat racist, very caustic. So we didn't hang out with them much because it was just too much. And now it's, we don't hang out with anybody. It's, <laughs> they're all crazy. They're all crazy. I mean, like, look, 23 and me, I know it sounds like a good idea, but if you're not entirely sure if your parent is your parent, then maybe don't go down that rabbit hole. Like yeah. maybe don't find that out. Yeah. Maybe, maybe just assume the best. And now no one's talking to each other. And I'm like, this is amazing. So then <laughs> on Friday, I did a fundraiser for a judge. And, you, you know, like, you're not supposed to have uh, political leanings. We're not supposed to know all those things. And this guy came up to me, goes, hey, I listened to your show. You know, we don't politically align, but I enjoy your show. And he walked away because I can't make a scene, especially when I'm being paid to do comedy. Yeah. But I can't, <laughs> I, I can't make a scene with somebody. It's like... I, I'm tired of that, that our politics don't align because the things I talk about on my show about how we're fighting for workers' rights, about fighting for women's autonomy, about fighting to make sure that kids get lunches in school. People want to bring prayer back, but they don't want to feed. Anyway, <laughs> those are the things I like to say. And it's, so it's not that our politics don't align. It's that our morals don't align. <laughs> but yeah. I can't say that in the middle of an Irish pub, I guess. <laughs> and he's a
your politics. So. Oh no! Why are we losing the audio? I don't know, Patty. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. She's still talking. Can yeah. she not hear us? She can't hear us. I guess. Patty. One type in chat. Patty, oh, no. we can't oh, hear no. you. Patty, we can't hear. Oh well. It sounds like she's done. Okay, yeah, Patty's done. Like we don't know what the hell happened there, but uh, Pat. Okay. We we can't hear. We couldn't hear you the last two minutes, and we can't hear you now. The judge got a hold of the. Feed. And you can't hear That's us. We, I think I, can, I think I was lip reading, and I know what her punchline was. She said, "And the <laughs> and the nun said, I don't even like chocolate." <laughs> I don't know no, what I happened think... there. That was oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't hear I've you. Never last... seen that before. Well, now we can oh, hear well, you. Was the crux of that last minute? Already. <laughs> Dogs crapping in court and judges sharing their politics with me. Stop it. All right, that's oh, it. Yay. Oh, yay. Well, I saw okay. something else. There's nothing else. The virtual comedy show will uncover new and exciting flaws with Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> if it can go wrong, we will ferret it out. So and I'm I'm in the I'm in my setup. Oh, yes, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say about this whole thing with uh People, I, I I saw the one today that's now they're passing around on Facebook. The, the as Christians, I'm tired of being told I can't be a Christian and that I will. And it the, the government is supposed to be run by Christians because it says in the Constitution that where it says it no. says endowed endowed by their creator. That means Jesus must run. And because we want everybody to have their own religion or not religion. Then of course that means yes. what? taken over. You know, it's just exactly. Kind of that. And that is why Patty is in front of a Christmas tree while Bob is wearing a yarmulke. That's right. <laughs> and I am in front of a dinosaur, which you know yeah. also lived with moose. I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh my god! It's, they were it's, wiped it's, out by the flood. It's wet. Oh my god! The flood. Yes. Oh my god! That's well, thank it. you, Patty. That was tremendous. That was yeah. tremendous. Thank you. Yeah. I'm back in the basement, hard. everybody. By the way, yay. Thinking so, of basement, well, yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what, what, wait a minute. Is that really what you want to say I right take now? It back. I take that back. Hey, everybody, look, it's time for Pat. Uh, uh, what am I saying? <laughs> Charles <laughs> and Janet. Okay. All right, hold on. I'm ready. I'm ready. Calm there. down, everybody. I'm, just calm down. I'm just all upset because they almost got a divorce it's during the pre show. <laughs> but everything's fine <laughs> now, right? It can happen any second of the day. I don't even know which one's over. Wait, who's saying stuff? Stop saying stuff. Hi, Karen. You're saying stuff loudly, please stop. Okay, it's time for our musical guest intro. Here comes the musical guest right. intro. It's our musical guest, our musical guest. Gonna sing something funny and then Steve will play something in between. Our musical guest, our musical guest. It's time for our musical guest. As you know, you guys will play a song and then I'll answer it and then you'll play another song. We got it. <laughs> So this is probably a much more poignant song than we normally play. It's a little funny. You gotta work in there and get it, but it's a little uh, poignant. So. A croc named Marvin lives in a pond out behind the house. He's got slimy skin, buggy eyes, and a horse fly in his mouth. He can't sing, he can't dance, he can't tell a joke. But late at night when the moon is full, you want to hear that sucker croak. He's just the king of one small lily pad. No, no, I guess that ain't so bad. I mean, he's a frog. No old blue don't look like much. He's my pride and joy. He's been my companion since I was a little boy. I can hear him off in the distance, howling at the moon. I want to go out there and kick his ass if he doesn't shut up soon. He stands out howling at the moon night after night. I guess that that's all right. Well, he's a dog after all. <laughs> there are fates within fates, wheels within wheels. wheels. We play the hand that the dealer deals. 
you can't even make a life play, it ain't funny, it ain't enough for something that just ain't real. We play the hand, 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 we play the hand. We play the hand. That the deal is. A poor man has dreams of somehow, someday getting rich. A rich man wants to chuck it all, cause life is such a witch. <laughs> Whatever life we're leading makes another life seem free. So none, none of us is ever what we really want to be. We, we stand out howling at the moon, broken in the night. And all in all, I guess that that's all right. That's life. That is life. <laughs> well, that was very nice. Let's add me here. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to just ruin it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am I am hurt. All the nice, all the nice, you're gonna just ruin it, right? That hurts me very, very much. No, I'm not gonna ruin it. I'm gonna do something that has something to do with that. Because your song is about how we need to do what we're made to do, what we're called to do, perhaps. Well, the first thing I'm called to do right now is acknowledge that our friend Sulu is with us, and I promised her that for my song, and since uh Bob here is wearing a yarmulke, we're gonna make this uh Sulu's Aliyah. Because uh, this past Saturday was the 45th anniversary of my bar mitzvah. So if Yay. you don't know what an aliyah is, and Sulu, unmute yourself, please. Um, what happens is the bar mitzvah boy, or the bat mitzvah girl, in this case, bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah boy, 45 years ago, uh, reads a portion of the Torah. And that portion is divided up into chunks, which are called aliyahs. And a person comes up on the bima, which is the altar, and says a little prayer before the reading. Then the bar mitzvah boy reads, and then the, the aliyah person reads some more prayers, and then they leave, and that's their honor. Then I had 13 aliyahs at my bar mitzvah. That's way too many. Wow. But tonight we're just going to do one. So hello. you hear me? Yes. Are you ready to go? Let's let's yes. start your aliyah for this song. Okay. Do we start? Yeah, go for it. Arku and Adonai Hamborak. Arku and Adonai Hamborak Lilam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Halo Masher Bahar Banu Mikol Hamim Benatan Lanu Et Torah To Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah Amen. Everybody. Blessed are you who gave us. Blessed are. I go on. In my Hebrew school, we weren't supposed to know what we were saying. <laughs> no, this is funny. Wait, this is funny. Okay, Blessed good. are you who gave us the goody guy. Blessed are you who who then gave him to Brad once a week to do a crazy show, watched by millions, giving up Monday night football. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the second part. That was extra. All right. So now I'll do the, the portion, and then after that you'll do the final uh, prayer there. Okay. okay. This is the world's only Jewish reindeer song. So you think you, oh wait, we need reverb. We need reverb. There we go. <laughs> so you think you oh, heard reverb. them all. Every Christmas song, every Yuletide carol that has ever come along. That's not quite true. We present one more to you. Mendel the reindeer reported for work on the 24th night of December. Mendel had come all the way from New York, clutching an overnight letter, saying Dasher was sick and a desperate St. Nick needed somebody healthy instead. But Santa didn't hire Mendel. He took a reindeer named Fred. Mendel, 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 Mendel. <laughs> Mendel, 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 Mendel. What do you know about Christmas anyway? What do you know? Oy vey. Oy vey. <laughs> Mendel said, Santa Claus, why'd you reject me so blatantly anti-Semitically? But Santa said, Mendel, that's simply not true. Just look around here, we're all Jewish too. You know Herschel and Harry and Larry and Tevya, Lenny and Izzy and Yanko and Edna, Jewish reindeer one and all, each one of them is. They just changed their Hebrew names to make it in showbiz. <laughs> Even Rudolph? Well, he's Hindu. 
<laughs> Mandela, Mandela, won't you please believe? Who else would want to work for me every Christmas Eve? <laughs> Mendel, Mendel, would you be mollified if I said you're overqualified? Maybe you'd be better suited for a desk job. What do you say? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Mendel the reindeer <laughs> in for work on the 26th day of December. Sporting <laughs> complaints from the bad boys and girls who got socks instead of Nintendo. <laughs> Let's pause and enjoy how awesome that rhyme was. <laughs> and Dasher got well, and Fred went back to Jersey to his job at the Agnostic Petting Zoo. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so what do we know about Christmas anyway? It's Jews pulling the sleigh. Except for Rudolph, he's from Bombay. <laughs> and oh, by the way. The Easter Bunny's got an alternate lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> and take it away, Sulu. I don't know whether to clap for that or not. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, don't. Yikes. Sulu, you want to close this up? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. You're going to do your portion. No, you can okay. do the whole thing. Oh, okay. Baruch got tired of noise. Thank you, Sulu, and thank you for eating while doing it. That was an unexpected bonus. Waited long enough, Charles and Janet. Please favor us with yet another song. I'm going away. Now for something completely different. It's the sweetest song about Christmas ever written, we think. <laughs> On a snowy winter morning, Dad and I set out to find the perfect Christmas tree set up in our house. We found it in the forest. Not far from our front door Something happened there that made us Not like Christmas anymore You see, Daddy chopped his big toe off Cutting <laughs> down our tree The words he yelled if he hopped around Still come back to me Bulls <laughs> fit, mother father Judas Priest, good <laughs> Molly, a pure holy, you got three Daniel trees. <laughs> God be Daniel for all you up. Uh, if you see Phil's lovers out there. <laughs> Back home, Mom was a bustle on this busy Christmas Eve. She was blooming east, fixing a feast for the whole fam family. <laughs> Now I was hanging stockings, brother had gone to get his girl. Everything was in its place, all was right with this old world. We didn't know I didn't snow, their task had gone so wrong. But we could hear the distant echo of Daddy's new Christmas song. <laughs>
So we searched for Dad's dead midget, cause we knew it wasn't fair. For us to be here all nice and warm, and his big fat toes still be out there. <laughs> it's been a family tradition that Christmas long ago. For mom and dad share a Christmas kiss under the missing toe. <laughs> oh, Smith. Oh, Smith. Oh, father. Oh, father. I, I am a Christmas Christmas guacamole. A pure ho, ho, holy. And happy Hanukkah. Okay. Well, I, just hey. you, I didn't mean to make you disappear, but then you're gone. <laughs> hey, all right. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's get them back hey, on. Hey, guys. Christmas, everyone. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh, 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 oh. And I know you I know what you've been wondering. Well, first of all, I'm gonna ask, where can we hear that song perhaps on a recording of some sort or seeing you do it live somewhere? Yeah, we're gonna see it at Bobby's Idol Hour. It's pretty much it. Okay. We haven't recorded that yet. We have not recorded that. Oh, I know a place yeah, you where you have now. <laughs> we yeah. haven't recorded. We play this show, and you can see it. Okay. Yes. But I'd really like to record it. That would be great. And speaking of recordings, if you like the song I did, you can find it on this. This is a Kvetchmas carol that Brad and I did together. I'm trying to say this. Put this I, And you cut me out of the song. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> of did. It's a, Who is that, man? I cut you out of the song because it's a bris miss tradition. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like yeah. to get this, these make excellent stocking stuffers, and I put the, the address where you can get them, www.stevegoody.com, in the chat if you'd like to. These, uh, it's not too late. In fact, it's a little early. Closer. They'll arrive by Christmas and Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So thank you, Charles and Janet Cox, or Janet and Charles Cox, however we're supposed to say. It. Thank that you. was really nice. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Whew. I hope El Ropo's ready. I hope so too. Is he back from his his I don't know. Let's see. Where is he? There, there he is. He is ready. I see him. He's got his hat and everything. Here we go. There he is. And you just took him out. I brought him in and you took him out. There he is. There he Hi is. there. <laughs> Hi, Phil Vanti. Hello. Nice to see you. Very nice to have last, you. Last time I did this, you said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have an intro for you. So should I start talking or not? No, no we have an, we we have have an, an intro. intro for you. We're we just, we're easing into it. No, you just calm down. Okay, who <laughs> ordered the Magic Castle Prime Rib? <laughs> good, good choice. Skip the seafood. Trust me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Reindeer the meat. Then we're going to have 10 minutes of awesomeness from Bill Bendy El Repo. It's time for our big headline. Got some funny, funny jokes to say I'll do a 10-minute set headliner Man, I'm so glad that it's Monday Yeah, 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 yeah Robo. Thanks, guys. Nice to see everybody. <laughs> Even though you're this big <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I uh, put the word out and uh, found out that last week's guest, uh, a fellow clown from Ringling Brothers, uh, he said he did a rope trick. Uh, Could that be true? Am I being punked? <laughs> <laughs> that was two weeks ago. Actually. Okay, so that leaves me with no other choice but then to do card tricks. Uh, <laughs> this is not easy for me, if if you know my history. As a as a kid, I used to get beat up by card magicians. <laughs> Who would have thought they were the tough guys? That's <laughs> out the wazoo. They they drove me to rope. That's how I became. Everybody in the elevator is singing it here. <laughs> All right, I'll be done. I just got to do 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, that's my superhero backstory. Uh, uh, hey, Grandpa, do you have a superhero backstory? Uh, I'm talking to Steve's dad, I think. No. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Well, just 
get busy. They're free. You can make up anything you want. <laughs> no. No, you don't even have to tell anyone. I was El Ropo in the closet for two decades <laughs> before I came out to my mom. Mom, <laughs> I'm El Ropo. We've always known, honey. <laughs> Bring your little string to the dinner table. Oh, Ma. Okay. This is sawing a woman in half. This is the only kind of card trick I'll do. And I will relish it because the card gets horribly mangled and disfigured. There, take that. All right. <laughs> memories, memories. This is the box sawing a woman in half. This is the box that she goes into. Pay no attention to her screams. She's merely an actress. <laughs> billions of those in LA. Just Vimpa, vip, find the camera. There it is. Okay. Vimpa, 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 vimpa. That's uh, sawing noises. <laughs> oh, boy. It, can you, is that good? Okay. Just wait. Get a bigger saw. Works every time. Okay. <laughs> Say goodbye to your little frizz. Unless you add a little heat, add a little garlic. Slowly but surely. Wow. Oh, wow. Your name, Queen Shirley. <laughs> uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> no, you can't look at the card. <laughs> Everybody always wanna so here's my what does this do, El Ropo? I don't know, but all the magicians have them. <laughs> and I've covered mine with brightly colored electrical tape. I love brightly colored electrical tape. I use it for everything. If I ever kidnap anyone, they're going to look fabulous. <laughs> my, my grandson's favorite trick. <laughs> He's not a bright kid. Okay. Do it again, Grandpa. Okay, Stanley. <laughs> Dad wow. named him Stanley after a hammer. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> uh, chapstick, anybody? This is called Big Chapstick, Little Chapstick. Big Chapstick, oh. Big Chapstick, Little Chapstick. <laughs> does this even work on Zoom? Yes. Uh, does it get <laughs> smaller? Does yes, it, it does. Big, little Chapstick. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, I'll just use the chapstick, the trick chapstick cap. Trick chapstick cap. Say that three times fast. Trick, <laughs> trick chapstick cap, trick chap. I can't do it. <laughs> it's called the trick chapstick cap goes up in the air and I catch it on my fingers. Wow. wow. Ooh. I'll do it again. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Slow motion. I'm the only guy that does it in slow motion. I'm so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that's really slow yeah that's like stanley I promise el chapo upper ear i catch it on my finger wow. oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right i got the idea when i was a kid i used to make puppets and uh, I sewed all their little puppet outfits and i was using thimbles and this I make my own thimbles. This is a catalytic thimble generator device. Cleverly <laughs> displays as a common... What, what is that? Okay, you plug this into any unsuspecting fist. What the... And then you place the original... This is a 3D scanner now. <laughs> Just go with it. Okay. Place the original in the scanner. And then the... The printer is down here. Kachuk, kachuk, kachuk. At wow. the end. See? Oh. Oh, what? Wow. Do it again. Okay. Yes. The original goes in the. That's the. Remember, that's the scatter. This is the kachuk, kachuk, kachuk. Wow. The, wow. <laughs> that's nice. kind of redundant after a while. But <laughs> that's, what, that's what a printer is, isn't it? It's a redundancy machine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stop me. Just seriously, I don't know how much time I'm, I'm left. Just, uh, just pull the zoom out from under me. I'll I'll be fine. All right. 
on, on last chance. Da 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 da. We ran out of oh, ran out of toner. Luckily, <laughs> <laughs> there's toner everywhere. <laughs> well, not there. <laughs> but, it's, oh, there it is. It's, oh, toner. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, thanks. Or you could tell it at the end of a routine when you see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seriously, I didn't even look at the clock. Steve, yell at me. How much time? I'd say you give us another minute and a half. What do you think? Minute and a half yeah. coming right up. This is uh all right. A former former shows act be damned. I will do a rope trick. I will do a this is my favorite rope. This is Brenda. Hey, baby. <laughs> Very jealous. Yesterday, I did a trick with dental floss. She said, who's the skinny chick? Yeah. <laughs> See that way, baby. We got a job to do. Here, this is uh, uh, that's a mood ring stuck on happy. <laughs> a great place to be stuck. I invented this while driving on the 405 freeway. You can get a lot done on the 405 <laughs> freeway. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, oh, I, I know. And finally, this is called Houdini Escapes. The ring is Houdini. Just go with it. All right. <laughs> Houdini is caught on a rope. Houdini don't care about your rope. He's like Honey Badger Houdini. You know? <laughs> Houdini is caught on a rope and locked in a trunk. Houdini laughs at your <laughs> trunk. Wrap the trunk with chain. Dump it in the East River. Houdini... Houdini always gets out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. As usual, if you had a good time, tell all your friends. Uh, if you didn't, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> 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 Bye. Bill Vante. That was very, very good. That was magical. Mystified. Yes, <laughs> and Steve Marshall, you know him? He, yeah. He was the yeah, guy. Cool guy. Tricks. He's I'm stealing your act. Yeah. We'll see him at the castle tomorrow night and take him to task. Yeah, please. <laughs> He's in from Japan. He's a, He lives in Japan. And oh, yeah. Yeah, long years. So. And he's come back to L.A. to get what's coming to him. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him we're coming for him. <laughs> Where will you be performing in the next little while? The castle, I'm guessing. Where else can we see you, Phil? Uh, most of the next month is all private shows because it's the holidays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The magicians make the big do the big bucks. Dough bucks. You you know. What <laughs> I get it. You're playing the restricted clubs. I won't go. It's fine. I won't go. <laughs> I'll send you a couple of short TikToks. Thanks, I appreciate it. Bill Vanty, everybody. Everybody. Hey. You found him. I found him. Okay. Okay. There he is. Okay. So what are you doing? I think it's time for this. How about another dumb song from Steve for no reason? But of course there is a reason, and the reason it's the holiday season. The season I is the reason. I didn't leave. Good, because you're in this. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. This is a lovely song written mostly by our friend Spaff, but we've updated it a little bit. And it's on our Kvetch Miss Carol CD. That's right. If you like what you hear, go get yourself a copy or six. Uh, <laughs> the 12 Days of Christmas, one of the most favorite and yet hated Christmas songs in the world because oh, it's- so, I don't like it. It's so repetitive yep, and it takes like forever. It. And Brad didn't even want to do this one, but then Spaff sent me these lyrics and no. there's no repetition, none. Everything's unique all <laughs> the way through. And I think you'll enjoy this a lot. And Brad would not do it unless he could do the fives, so. I'm just doing the fives. This will be the Zoom version of the fives, so there'll be a little bit of lag. That's how it goes. Here we go. Da -da 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 On the first Christmas sweater my true love gave to me was the leg lamp from Christmas Story. <laughs> On the second Christmas sweater, these are sweaters, my true love gave to me were two monster trucks and Godzilla fighting Bruce Lee. Come back, Brad. On the third Christmas sweater, my true love gave to me were three little pigs, two magic mics, and a sloth in a Lamborghini. <laughs> On the fourth Christmas sweater, my true love gave to me were four beetle heads, three blind mice, two horny toads, and a goat with a hipster goatee. 
<laughs> on the fifth Christmas sweater my true love gave to me were five golden girls. <laughs> five? Five. Four naked Smurfs, three amigos, two cans of Spam, and a Christmas vacation RV. <laughs> <laughs> On the sixth Christmas sweater my true love gave to me were six Brady children, five jingle balls, four Kim Junglins, three drunk elves, two crack nuts, and Opie doing shots with Aunt B. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're going with this. <laughs> On the seventh Christmas sweater my true love gave to me were seven dwarfs hot tubbing, six strips of bacon, five Chandler Bings. We Aww. miss him. Four wiener dogs, three Sith Lords, two water bongs, and an avatar babe in 3D. <laughs> On the eighth Christmas sweater my true love gave to me were eight legged lobsters, seven colored rainbows, six packs of Guinness, five ding a -lings. Four parrot turds, three stooges, two headed cows, and a canceled celebrity. <laughs> Matt On the ninth Christmas sweater my true love gave to me were nine Supreme Court judges, eight naughty snowmen, seven cats with lasers, six cups for beer pong, five ding a -lings. Skip to the next one, Brad. You already did that I'm one. I'm sorry, five. <laughs> Good gold G string. <laughs> we can't leave that out. Four lava lamps, three canned hams, two Vulcan ears, and Bo Duke in the General Lee. <laughs> He's woke now. On the tenth Christmas sweater, my true love gave to me were ten pounds of tinsel, nine sprigs of holly, eight bags of glitter, seven chains of popcorn, six rolls of ribbon, five ho ho hoes, four flying squirrels, three care bears, two kissing sharks, and a purple box full of Plan B. <laughs> Which is way more valuable now than it was yes, when we wrote this. All that we can get. Yeah, on the 11th Christmas sweater, my true love gave to me were 11 singers singing, 10 bouncers bouncing, 9 babies dancing, 8 reindeer mating, 7 llamas pooping, 6 wrestlers sweating, 5 golden retrievers, 4 letter words, 3 ex-wives, 2 camel toes. <laughs> and Beyonce twerking Jay-Z. All right. The last verse. On the twelfth Christmas sweater my true love gave to me were, and all these are on one sweater, twelve Pee Wee Hermans, eleven Pez Dispensers, ten Joke Commandments, nine Santas Mooning, eight Zombies Eating, seven Eleven Slurpees, six Big Lebowskis, five Strings of Light, which gave me four Muscle Sprains, three Slip Discs, two Pulled Groins, now I need physical therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's number so five. Since the last time I sang that, we lost both Pee Wee and Chandler. Mm. I know. Exactly. Uh, uh, but and now they Beyonce live on in your song. They live on. We've immortalized them. Yes. Indeed. And Beyonce, and Beyonce, Beyonce hasn't twerked Jay Z in years. <laughs> but they're not dead. That's the important thing. All right. It's time to beg for money. Brad begs for money. Hey, we need your money. We don't charge a cover for a two drink minimum. So, what did you expect, Jack? Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Tassel. This is the Virtual Comedy Show. If you go to virtualcomedyshow.com and give us money, uh, we can make Patty's audio work the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> we will miss that last minute and a half Sorry. of whatever the hell she's saying. But you know what? What's funny is she was really still really animated. I thought that was, yeah. great. She was, great. It was just as entertaining. You could feel what she was saying and how great it was, even though we had no idea what the hell she was talking about. So that's fantastic. <laughs> also, if you send us money, we'll buy Janet and Charles a damn ring light is what we'll buy. <laughs> that's what they're going to do if you send us money at virtualcomedyshow.com. Click Donate to Comedians. And El Ropo will uh, not have to get an El Jabo, I think. That'll <laughs> and he can beat up El Marshallo. El Marshallo, yes. And we will and we will not give Marshall Stern a cent. Hey, Marshall. <laughs> oh, my, hey, Kelly hey. And, Kelly and Mark gave me a cup. Oh, nice. wow. Nice. But don't be confused. Cool. Don't send them money. They don't, don't send need them money. money. They gave me no money. That's all I got was the cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, as again, my wife and I travel a lot. So we're about 20,000 in to that trip. So, <laughs> so go to virtualcomedyshow.com, click donate to comedians, and we will appreciate it. And maybe you'll get an email from me six days later. Could be. Right? All right. Let's finish it. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Boom! That was the worst joke ever!
By the way, if you're planning on giving us money, this may uh, kill that. <laughs> <laughs> Wife of Will and Grace star, Aaron Eric McCormick, has uh, filed for divorce after 26 years. Uh, the wife of the Will and Grace star has uh, filed for divorce. When asked what he will do now that he is alone, the star said, just Jack. That was the virtual comedy show. We learned a lot of stuff we didn't need to know. Like Steve has a band-aid on his big toe. Yep. <laughs> That's what you get when you watch this show. Fascinating, isn't it? We have a lot of fun at the virtual comedy show. It's better than sitting home playing with your toes or going to the dump to watch stuff decompose. Keep coming back to the virtual comedy show. We hope you enjoy the virtual comedy show. You don't have to dress up. Show. See you Monday at the Virtual Comedy Show. It's at www.virtualcomedyshow.com. That's right. Bye.